Hi, my name is Grady Turner and I'm an application engineer with the Cross Company Automation Group. In this video, I'll be explaining how to program the three different move types for the universal robot. The first type is a move J, and that's a joint move. It's the simplest form and it's the best way to get from point A to point B quickly. The robot will calculate the shortest overall joint move for each of the joints to get to the point all at the same time. The robot won't care about the tool center point position. It'll just be an arc and get to the waypoint that you programmed. I have a program here that will show you four different waypoints using the joint move. Let's move the robot into position, its starting point. And these are just four random moves. As you can see, all the joints arrive at the waypoints at the same time and the tool center point doesn't trace any sort of path, it's just a random arc. Next, let's look at move L. The L stands for linear, so the tool center point will move between its points in a linear fashion or a straight line. This is good for when you need to move around something or trace an object. Get the robot to its first position again. Now this is four different waypoints, but as you can see, the robot's moving its tool, or that center flange, in a straight line. Next is the move P command. Now P stands for process. The tool center point will still move in a linear motion, but this is more for gluing type application or dispensing. The robot can move with constant velocity around curves or blends. What I mean by blends, as you can see here, I have a starting point, a way, two waypoints and an endpoint. And on the robot controller, you can set up a blend radius. So for example, here I have a blend radius of 20 millimeters and a blend radius of 50 millimeters. Now, instead of coming to the actual waypoint that you program, the robot will enter this radius, curve around, and then exit. And same for this one. It'll curve around and it enters and exit in a perpendicular manner, and then come to your endpoint here. So as an example, I have four more points. Move the robot into its starting position again. Now these are the same four points I used for the move L move. But now you can see the robot will curve around the points. And it's up to the user to define or determine what kind of curve radius that they would like. And the good thing about move P is that around these curves, the robot will maintain a constant velocity and that's needed for applications, like I said, gluing, dispensing, tracing around an object.